This is Grave Confessions from the Grave Talks. Daily, raw, real, and disturbing accounts of the living, interacting with the dead. To share your grave confession, experience with the paranormal, supernatural, or the undead, call toll-free 888-GHOST-13. That's 888-446-7813. Now, today's grave confession. Hey guys, my name is Justice, and I'm from a small town in Southern California. And I, I did just call about this, I'm sorry. Um, I got another call, and my call cut off you guys, so I apologize about that. But um, so this story happened in May of 2017, and I'm not really too sure if it was like maybe like a ghost or something like that, but you know. So uh, I live in, you know, there's two colleges in my town. There's uh, Channel Islands University, and then there's also Calu and uh, you know, California Lutheran University. And Channel Islands, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it opened in 2004, actually, as a college, or you know, early 2000s. But before that, it was a mental hospital. And uh, you know, before obviously 2004 and all that, it used to still be just open to the public, kind of like as if they just left it down there. And not only like to get down there, to drive past it is a road down there, like really like sketchy. It's really um, you know, just quiet and calm, and there's like really nothing down there. So the road that takes you down there, the quickest way, which is called Potrero, is it's just super eerie. Like driving down there alone at night, it's, it's scary on its own. But so, um, you know, as, as a kid growing up, there was this like kind of like not, I mean, not really like an urban legend, but the um, slaughterhouse and the dairy farms that they had used for the mental ward had been completely left. Like they had been untouched. Like the whole university had obviously been left untouched, but you know, they slowly started renovating. And I believe maybe a year or two years ago, they had just finished um, completely changing the last building. And so the only things that are left of the old mental hospital are the slaughterhouse and the dairy farm. And as a kid growing up, we called it Scary Dairy. And, um, you know, not everyone knew where it was. Like, it was kind of like one of those things where it's like, you know, you find it or you don't, but uh, no one really knew an exact location for it growing up um, until last, last May. A friend of mine who I'd known who had kind of always been there, he'd always posted on social media, like, oh, here, I'm at Scary Dairy. Um, I asked him, like, hey, he's like, you, can you take us there? It was, we had, like, nothing to do. It was almost two in the morning. It was, like, one at night. And he takes us there, and it's probably like a half mile walk through like um, bushes, and you have to like, kind of like hide yourself as you're going through there. And we get there, and it's probably about 14 of us. Like he brings like his four friends that are girls, and like it's all me and my friends. And we're walking up, and you know, first you know, there's nothing really too sketchy about it. Like you get to it, and it's just this like dark path, and you start walking through it. You know, we're all having a good time. Um, I notice that some people are a little bit more nervous than others. Like some people are kind of like, oh, it's a little scary. But uh, you know, you, you keep walking. It looks like any other so, like any other trail in Southern California. Like almost all the trails down here <laughs> look the same hiking trail. And I'm like, oh, you know, this isn't too bad. Like I don't, you know, I don't see what's so scary about this. And just you know, all of a sudden, you just you kind of get this like dead stop, and you just can see the old like slaughterhouse from a distance. And it's just like this ruin, like it's rusted, and you know, obviously uh, there's graffiti everywhere, like all down there. But like you can see that, and it's just like the middle of the night, and it wasn't like one of those nights where, like the moon was out, like it was a dark night. And so we're just kind of stopped there and we're staring at it. And um, I'm like, let's go. You know, like, let's, let's go see it. Like, this is so cool. And um, as we start walking closer, he goes, wait, wait, guys, guys. Like, we're right next to it. Like, you, you know, you can see the whole like, ruins, like everything inside of it. He goes, wait, wait, stop. And he goes, shh. And then immediately after, like, it's dead quiet after he does it, like, not even like two seconds after, something immediately goes back towards us. Shh. Like a human voice saying that. And we all sprinted back and we, we stopped like halfway back. Like, dude, like, what was that? And our friend let us down there was like, he was laughing. He's like, oh, you know, like I got you guys. Like, um, it was just a bird, like it's just a bat. Like I hear this noise every time I come down here. And you know, what I didn't really think about with my like adrenaline rush at the time was he regularly went down there with those four people he brought with us and they were terrified. Like they were like, we're going back to the car. We're going back to the car. Like we've never heard this before. And you know, wound up like uh, two of my friends who were guys went back to our cars with them. You know, it was obviously, you know, it's like, we're not going to let them walk back by themselves. And, you know, we're just like, hey, like, you know, we've, we've made it this far. Like, I, I'm not going to go back. You know, like, let's let's go, let's go see what it is. And, um, you know, I, I always had it registered to myself that, like, these people who have gone with him, you know, I've seen it in his social media posts. Like, they've gone with him multiple times at night and throughout the day. And they have never heard this sound. Like, they're clearly afraid of it. You know, like, if it's something that they've heard regularly, they probably wouldn't be too scared of it. And, you know, I was telling my mom, who is a regular view, uh, listener to this podcast, which is who she's the one who showed me this. Uh, hey, mom. <laughs> um, 
I told her, I was like, Mom, like, we heard this noise that sounded like a human shush. And she's like, I'm like, but we, we, you know, it's just a bat. We figured it was just a bat. And she, she looks at me, she's like, I don't know. I've never heard a bat go shush. And like, it hit me like in that moment, like this is a few days after, but like it hit me in that moment. And like, I don't know what that is. But so, um, you know, we keep on going and we get to the dairy farm and the dairy farm, I want to say is probably the coolest part about it because the dairy farm is actually open. You can actually walk into this and, you know, obviously it's like, we didn't know what it was. And there's like, you know, the showers where I guess they they clean everything. I'm not sure, you know, how dairy farm works, but, and even that is like really eerie. Like people have like spray painted all over and it's not just like the normal, like spray paint. It's like some people have put like really just like eerie things on the walls, like things like, Oh, like what's this? But, um, you know, it's really dark and it's really eerie. And it's just like, you know, like every corner you walk around, it's just like, you go, (laughs) you go first, dude, you go first. But, um, you know, that's my story. Um, you know, definitely, I felt this presence of definitely being watched throughout the entire time that I was there. And since then, I've gone back probably, you know, three or four times with other people. And one of my times when I was going back, um, I was actually just driving past it. It's, it's funny because, like, once you figure out where it is, it's so plain, it's so blatantly obvious, like, where it is. Like, it's like, I, I did not know I, that it was there. It's obviously like a trail that hikes back, but it's kind of just like, that makes the most sense as to where it would be because it's like the campus road follows into it like the back road to the campus so it's like obviously like they would you know do everything over there and they transport it but like in my research of this land like this first one i'm not too sure about but like you know we had a lot of native tribes in our area um you know i'm not too close from like the chumash casino out here and stuff like that but like apparently this was a place where they uh, slaughtered like a bunch of like the natives there and um this like i was talking telling that i hadn't told this one of my friends but me and her were driving past it, and I was like, yeah, like, well, have you ever been? She's like, oh, yeah, I tried to go once on Halloween. And as we were going there, like, we didn't really experience anything weird, but we heard, like, tribal chants. And I was just like, I, it hit me right there. I was like, that, like, you know, that makes sense. Like, that could be where that's coming from. Like, maybe it's, like, the spirits or something like that. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. And I got told her, I was like, that's crazy, because, like, this, this happened. You know, like, this, this is something, like, that happened a long time ago. She's like, oh, like, you know. That's crazy. But, um, you know, beyond that, and then, you know, obviously there's some stuff like, you know, some of the patients did die while in the slaughterhouse and stuff like that because they, they weren't very monitored very well. You know, because it was like they would let the patients kind of do the butchering and all that because, like, they would um, want them to kind of have, like, an experience or a real world job. But, um, you know, that's really all I have to say. Um, I'm sure this was a little bit more different than the average story that calls in. And, you know, obviously I love hearing every story that comes in. Um, and, uh, you know, I really enjoy this podcast. I love listening to this with my mom. Because we, we work at the same place. Like, you know, as we drive into work, we listen to this podcast every day. So definitely a great listen. Um, thank you for all the quality content and for everything you guys do. Um, thanks for letting me call in. All right, take care. This has been a grave confession. From the Grave Talks. To share your grave confession experience with the paranormal or the undead, call toll-free 888 ghost 13 that's 888-446-7813